Hey everyone, welcome back to our Rune Factory 4 crafting series. And in this episode, we'll be talking all about accessories and all the cool stuff we can do with those. Uh, this episode might be a bit long. Um, the scope of this episode changed a lot as I was planning what to do. Uh, but basically, what we're going to do in this one is we're going to talk about, we're going to summarize accessory and shoe crafting and how that works. Uh, and then we will talk about all of the accessory abilities. So all of the abilities you actually get from accessories. Uh, there are a lot of them. And basically, um, in researching this video, I found out that there wasn't really a comprehensive list of what they all do. So I thought I would make that here. Um, and basically to make it interesting, I was gonna order them from what I think is worst to what I think is best, because there's no other good way to order it. But from that, uh, with that in mind, we're gonna be able to figure out uh, what are the good final recommendations, like the sort of final accessory combinations that you're gonna to want to do. Uh, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Uh, let's quickly summarize what we did the last time, uh, which is how you craft the best accessories and shoes. And basically, all you want to do, um, what you want to remember, is that when you make accessories and shoes, uh, you can put multiple different effects on the same piece of equipment. Uh, to, do, to do that is very, very simple. Uh, there are two main ways. First, you want to find stuff with an effect. So the shield ring has a special effect, uh, which it says occasionally reduces damage received to one. So we can just make that. And if we want to make something else, uh, let's say this um, magic ring, uh, which speeds up the time needed to charge. I can create a magic ring with the shield ring inside of it. And if I just do that, I have a magic ring that has the effects of magic ring, but also the effects of a shield ring. So I have both their effects at once. Uh, the two main ways you can do that is just to basically put everything in together um, in the same accessory piece. So you can use up to three pieces when you're crafting it. So three accessories plus your initial accessory means you get four abilities. The alternative way uh, is to basically make sure that they're all in one, you get three abilities in one accessory first. Uh, so now I have two abilities on that shield ring. I can make a third ability. I can give it the abilities of this paralysis ring, for example. And then I can put that all in this last piece. Uh, let's make a aquamarine brooch. I can put all of those in that aquamarine brooch. Um, and this aquamarine brooch should have the effects of the other three things I put inside it. The advantage of this is just that I can fill the accessory slots with other stuff and increase the rarity uh, and level bonus, uh, which you can see in the first video. Uh, but yeah, and just to quickly verify that it is what it says, it, what I say it is, uh, we can just go talk to Barrett, who is right now having lunch, it looks like. Uh, we equip our piece of equipment. There is the amethyst brooch over here. And he will say that I have an acromary brooch with a paralysis ring, magic ring, and shield ring in it. So yeah, uh, very, very simple. Just make sure that all of the ingredients, all of the excess we need, are ingredients used in the final piece of equipment. And that way we can use all four. So with that in mind, uh, we're gonna now go through all the different accessories, and I want you to keep in mind like which ones you think are really interesting, which ones you think are good. Just remember that you can put four in each piece of equipment. So yeah, uh, first up, is our sort of D tier, the ones that I think uh, don't really have any effect at all, um, or at least no effect I can find out, and no real use. And the D tier, luckily, only has one accessory, and that is the Art of Defense. Um, I cannot for the life of me figure out what this accessory does. Uh, let me equip it now. Basically, um, what it says it does is it half the time spent flinching, grabbing its reader, a heart of steel, yes, reader. I guess it's a scroll where reading. Um, I don't know what this does. I assume this is stun resistance. Uh, if you recall, correct, if you recall, um, stun is a status effect we do where if we hit an enemy, um, they're just gonna shake in place for a bit. And just from the way that it's phrased, it seems like it decreases the time spent stunned. Um, I couldn't really notice any time myself. I tried testing against different enemies I had to see like when I could recover from attack. Um, if I could like escape combos, I couldn't, I could not find any use for this piece of equipment at all. Uh, which is really weird because its crafting skill is just so high. 
Um, a part of me thinks that like, well, I don't know what this one does, and we also don't know what the Earth element does. So, and that also seems to have something to do with like spawn and knockback. So like, part of me is like, maybe there's some weird thing they changed about the game before they released it, and that left both of them useless. But yeah, either way, I have no clue what this does. This one is probably completely useless, even if it does do something. Okay, now our seat here. Uh, so this is where things get interesting. This is where things are actually occasionally useful. Uh, there are three things in this tier, I think. Uh, one of them is the stay up ring, which is pretty funny. Um, so that is this yellow one over here. And what it does, it just stops you from yawning. Um, and basically at 1 a.m. on the dot, uh, you will yawn. The stay up ring just stops you from yawning. Um, this is slightly useful, I guess, uh, just because when you yawn, you're a slightly vulnerable. Like you can be, you just stop whatever you're doing and you can be attacked. Um, so I guess this can be used if you know you're gonna fight at 1 a.m. Alternatively, you can just like go somewhere safe. Um, but yeah, it's something. Uh, you also generally wanna sleep before 1 a.m. anyway, because if you wait until after, you don't get the skill points for sleeping. But yeah, uh, I guess it's one use is you can just try and not sleep. Uh, but if you do that, uh, so you still get uh, fatigued and sick if you don't go to sleep at all. So you can, I guess, make an accessory with a stay up ring and like fatigue and sick resistance to make sure you never have to sleep. If you really want to do that, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, sleep is very good and important for your health and your skill levels in game. But yeah. Okay, so next one is our Earth Pendant. Uh, that is this one. And what the Earth Pendant does is it doubles our HP and RP healing from items. Uh, actually, let me unequip that first. Um, so I have some healing items. I have these pineapple juice. Um, and when I eat this pineapple juice, you will see that I gained a whole bunch of health. I gained 42,000 health, uh, we see there. When I equip the Earth Pendant, uh, which was this one again, how much health do I gain from drinking some pineapple juice? 84,000. So yeah, I just double the HP and RP I gained from healing items. Uh, it's just HP and RP healing, so I checked. This doesn't increase um, your maximum, so if so, some foods increase your maximum HP or maximum RP. This does not affect that. This doesn't affect your other stats either, so you aren't going to get extra strength, unfortunately. Uh, so basically, since it's just HP and RP, um, and accessory, like, sorry, inventory slots aren't really that restrictive. You can usually fit as much food as you want. Um, I don't think that this is very useful at all. But it does have a use, I guess, early game if you want to, like, save your healing items. Uh, but yeah. So, next up is our throwing ring. And this one is actually one of my favorite uh, accessories because it's really, really funny. Uh, and what this basically does is it lets you throw items further away. Uh, so let's go to my farm just to show what I mean. Basically here I can, I guess, pick up this pineapple and throw it. Uh, and that's normally how it throws. If I equip my throwing ring, uh, it just goes like forever. <laughs> well, not forever, but like a really long way away. Uh, this isn't usually practical. Um, it's one, I guess, big practical use is that like if I want to throw some wood into my um, wood box, I can try and throw it from further away. Uh, but there's a few like funny uses. Um, one is that I can go to the Tournament Flurry contest, uh, which is this one. Uh, this is the contest where you just throw turnips at the villagers. Since you can throw them further away, you can score more points with this throwing ring. Um, it also works on other things as well. Um, I think you can also just throw furniture really far. Um, you can throw birds really far. If you didn't know, you can pick up birds, by the way. Um, if I can wait for one to spawn. Uh, I need to take up my shoes as well. Okay, you can pick up birds. And you can throw the birds from further away at enemies. Like, uh, which is pretty mean. Um, there is one strange interaction there, and that's with the gloves. Uh, so this was pointed out to me by a friend of mine. Um, so normally, if you don't use your throwing ring, you can throw your enemies at other enemies with your gloves. Well, I missed there. But basically, I can... Yeah. I'm not good with gloves, as you can see. Don't kill me! Okay, you can throw your enemies at other enemies and you damage that way. Uh, with throwing ring, 
uh, which you will see right now if I can find the item. You can try, but the enemy will just go very, very far. I guess in theory this is nice, like crowd control, maybe. Like the enemy's not gonna attack you if it's all on the other side of the room. Bye. Um, but yeah, it's just a really weird interaction. So throwing ring is very, very funny. Uh, arguably useful in some contests or when you're farming, but yeah, it's more funny than it is useful. But I like it. But yeah, so that is the sort of, not really useful, but sort of useful tier. Uh, but okay, so here's our B tier and here's where we actually start getting stuff that is actually worth considering uh, for a lot of useful builds and stuff, or when you're just playing through the game normally. So one of them is the Star Pendant. Um, so this one just increases your XP gain, uh, seemingly doubling it. Um, it's very nice if you do want to increase your level up um, early in mid-game. Uh, level isn't the most important um, stat. Um, usually you want to increase your skill levels. Your skill levels contribute to your stats much more than your actual level. And when you do increase your levels late game, um, it's usually easier to level up by drinking levelizer and by getting levelizer that way. So basically star pendant isn't as useful as it might seem. Um, levels just aren't that useful and when you do get lots of levels, when you do start getting lots of levels, there are better ways than using star pendant. Um, but it's still nice, it still does something and it's still nice in that early mid game if you want to get levels faster. Uh, next up are three that I paired together that are all very similar. Uh, we have the paralysis ring, the Silent Ring, and the Poison Ring. Uh, so all of these have high resistance to some stat. So these are stats, these don't actually do stuff to you, so you can inherit them and lose them. But the one thing they have that's interesting is they all have extra effects, which increase your status attack for that element. Basically, if you equip uh, each of these rings, uh, you have a high chance of collecting status. So I just punch them and they'll get paralyzed. Uh, same deal with the other one, so I can do that with my silent ring as well. And I can make them silent. Uh, I can do the same thing with poison. Uh, poison is probably the best one, because uh, you, you get you unlock this accessory very early on. Um, so you can like go to higher level places early on and just poison enemies to death and just run away and wait for them to die. Um, so it's incredibly useful for that. Uh, it's also useful for grinding skill levels. Like, uh, you can increase your uh, stats for the resistances just by inflicting new statuses. So it's nice for that as well. Um, it's also just a weird and fun thing that you can combine together. So remember that we can use multiple abilities in the same piece. So I can just make anything I want. Uh, what's a nice one that I can use? Um, okay. Um, so if I want to make, say, a early game, we can get... Eh, we just pick anything. I'm going to make these work gloves, and I'm going to put my three status rings in it. And from this, I uh, basically have gloves that if I equip, um, I have 100% status for all three statuses. Uh, so I'm take them all, and they're all poisoned, paralyzed, and uh, sealed at the same time. Which is pretty nice and useful um, if you want to grind skill levels. Um, you can also just equip it, um, hit them once, and then just swap your accessory as well if you want to do that. Like, that's a nice strategy as well. So yeah, uh, there's a lot of creative uses for this. Um, I'm not a huge fan, but I can see why this is incredibly useful um, if you want to go through this route. Okay, next up are the Hero's Proof and the Proof of Wisdom. Um, hey, Clorica, can I borrow you for a second? Okay, okay um, so basically what these two items do is they gradually heal your HP and RP. So the Hero's Proof increases my HP gradually. Um, about every two seconds it heals about 1.5% of my HP, which means if I just stand here for two minutes, I'll be fully healed. Uh, the other one is the Proof of Wisdom. Uh, which is uh, the same thing but, but for RP. The rate's a bit lower, it's about half, so it'll take four minutes to fully heal. 
Uh, it's very nice uh, if you just want to like sustain yourself. Um, I don't think this is ultimately too useful for yourself, just because, as I said, with regards to the Breath Pendant, uh, healing items are very, very easy to just fill your inventory up with. Uh, you don't really need uh, to stay alive with this. Um, it can be funny paired with the Stay Up Ring to just like never need to sleep. Uh, but yeah, the one really cool thing about this is that if you have the Hero's Proof, um, so you can give any accessory to an ally. Um, I just gave this to Clorica, as you can see, Clorica is going to heal every few seconds. Um, and this basically is pretty interesting because if she dies, um, she'll just get up and heal herself. <laughs> Which is pretty interesting and pretty useful. It just means I don't need to like use air back heals, you can just heal herself just from Hero's Proof. So it doesn't work all the time. It's a bit like um, you might have seen in some places there are just fire enemies that absorb fire attacks from the area around them. It works a bit like that. So there's a chance that she'll just die if she gets hit at the wrong time. But sometimes she will just heal herself, which is nice. So yeah, uh, it's nice to give to allies heroes proof. And proof of wisdom is nice to just keep your RP up. But yes, uh, so again, it has some nice uses. Next up, we have the hand knit scarf and the fluffy scarf. Okay, so these are, I think, slightly, they're both underestimated and overestimated, if that makes sense. Like, they're both better and worse than people think they are. So, uh, what do they actually do? So, the, the hand knit scarf says it halves RP consumption, with some exceptions, and the fluffy scarf, blah, fluffy scarf says it cuts all RP consumption, with some exceptions. Uh, the problem is that there are actually a lot of exceptions, and it's usually the exceptions that you want. Um, so, here is a quick slide. Okay, so basically there are sort of three rough things that you lose RP for. One are just normal things. So right now my RP is 2673, as you can see on the top right. Um, if I use my rune ability, Reaper Slash, I think I'll lose 5 RP. Yep, so I'll be 2668. Uh, if I use my fluffy, sorry, my hand knit scarf, I'll only lose 2 or 3 RP, so I'll be 2665. Um, and if I use my fluffy scarf, I will lose no RP. I'll, be on, I'll still be on 2665. So, for these sort of normal things, the hand knit scarf halves my RP use, the fluffy scarf makes my RP use zero. The problem is that, like, my RP is pretty high, so losing 5 RP isn't that big a deal. Um, most of my RP cost goes to using spells like um, Master Cure. Um, so I was on two. Um, right now I'm on two four four seven. Let me unequip my scarf. If I use this, I go down to two 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 eight. Uh, so that's about two hundred and nineteen, I think. I think I lose two hundred nineteen RP. If I use my fluffy scarf, I lose the same amount. Um, I still lose about two hundred and something RP. Uh, there is no change here. So basically how this one works, how Monster Cure works and a lot of other things is that you just lose a percentage of your overall RP. Um, we can quickly prove that, I guess. Um, I think there are some... Okay, can I quickly make a... So, as I think we know, you can increase your RP pretty easily by making some relaxed heat. Some relaxed heat. Um, where is it? Cool. So my RP is going to go... Okay, so before I was losing about 200 RP from using um, my Master Cure. Now if I drink my relaxed tea. My RP maximum goes from about 2,000 to about like 4,000. Uh, so right now I'm on 3,728. I'll use Master Cure. I'll lose about 400 RP. So my maximum RP doubled and the cost of the spell also doubled. So these are what I call percent RP loss actions. So that includes things like your healing spell, but it includes a lot of other things as well. Um, things like watering your field also takes percent RP loss, and so Hanit Scarf and Floppy Scarf don't do anything. So they don't affect field watering at all, 
uh, which is going to be a huge part of your RP cost. They also do affect a lot of staff spellers. Um, so this staff spell uses a whole lot of RP. Um, and whether I use Fluffy Scarf or not, I'm going to lose a lot of that. So here I'm going to use the Fluffy Scarf again. Um, and as you can see, I still use, use like the same amount of RP. So yeah, this is what I mean when I say it's a lot worse than it seems because it doesn't affect the big RP costs. For the stuff that you wanted to reduce the amount of RP use, it doesn't do anything. However, it does decrease the, crop, the cost of crafting, oddly enough. So right now I have nothing equipped. Hold on, I should let Oracle go to sleep. Okay, um, so if I want to make a um, pineapple juice right now, it'll cost me 162 RP, which you can see on the bottom left. If I equip my hand knit scarf, um, it costs me 152 RP. So I lose about 6% of the RP cost just from equipping a hand knit scarf. If I use a fluffy scarf, it goes even further. So it's only 142 RP. So I lose like another 10 RP, another 12% of the cost. And I don't think I've seen anyone mention this ever. Um, they can stack. So I can make, I can actually make a, um, let me make some yarn first. I can actually make a hand knit scarf that also has a fluffy scarf in it. So let's make a new hand knit scarf. Let's put in the fluffy scarf as well. And if this was made properly, so the last, so with just the fluffy scarf, it cost 142. My new hand knit scarf, I think this is the right one. Cook with the mixer. Okay, that one was 152. Um, I think that must be the wrong one. This should be the right one. Cook with the mixer. And here, the cost goes down to 133. So the cost of the crafting goes down even further. So I lose the total amount of about 18% of the total RP cost. Um, this may or may not seem significant to you, but basically remember that if the RP cost of something um, is above your maximum RP, you automatically fail. Since this reduces the RP cost, uh, this means that with the ability of a very fluffy hand-knit scarf, you can actually craft things that you normally wouldn't be able to. So between the hand-knit scarf, the fluffy scarf, and relaxed tea, you can both increase your RP by a lot and decrease the cost of things, and from that be able to craft things that you normally wouldn't be able to. But yeah, so I think that's really cool. It turns out that hand knit scarf and fluffy scarf do actually stack and you can make things with both of them. But yeah, okay. So with that in mind, there's like a very useful use for these. Next up on the list is the Jew Pendant. Um, so the Jew Pendant doubles all stats and effects from tools. Um, so right now I have a tool in my inventory, which are is this fishing pole. So this fishing pole, I guess, has a few things. Um, Let's look at the magic defense. So this sacred pole gives me 85 magic defense, and right now magic defense is 9859. What the Jew Pendant does is it doubles all the stats. Hold on. Sorry, I need to fully unequip everything. So, sorry, right, right now it's 9856. If I equip the Jew Pendant, that goes up to 9941. So I just gained a whole bunch of magic defense um, from the equipment I was holding. So yeah, um, it's not bad. Um, it's not great either. Um, doubling stats, it also yeah, sorry, it also seems to affect your other things like critical and knock and stun. So if you are going to use a farming tool for combat, um, this can actually be very useful because it'll double those stats. Uh, you can do things like upgrade your staff, sorry, your fishing pole to have like plus three thousand strength. That 3,000 strength doubles to 6,000 strength, which is very, very high. It's still going to be lower than like your normal weapons, but it's still it'll narrow the difference quite a lot. The problem is it just takes an accessory slot, but it's definitely worth considering if you do want to use it. It'll just give you more stats. Um, but yeah, so Jew Pendant is pretty useful for that. 
Um, it has a weird glitch where if you equip it from the shortcut menu, the stats might not probably update. You just need to like pause and unpause. Uh, pretty weird, but it's fixable. Um, and it also works for things with light ore. So if I get my fishing pole and I put it on a longsword, the new longsword stats will also double. So yeah, that's very nice too. So yeah, um, Dew Pendant is pretty useful um, if you are using those, but it takes up a slot, which you might not want to give up. Okay, next up is Shield Ring. Uh, this one is also pretty interesting. So what Shield Ring does is it gives you a 25% chance of taking only one damage. Uh, let's see if I can get it to trigger. Yeah, there we go. I took one damage instead of how much I would normally take. 600. So yeah, um, it's nice if enemies might kill you. Um, so instead of having a 100% chance of killing you, they only have a 75% chance of killing you. Uh, so yeah, if you're like fighting enemies that are way tougher than you are, it can be useful. But other than that, it's not going to be too good. Uh, it has a few big problems. Um, so one of them is that even if you absorb an element, you'll take damage. So if you would normally heal from attack, you still take damage, which isn't good, of course, if you want to heal. And secondly, you still act like you took the damage. Um, so you might have seen it when I took that one damage, I was knocked back slightly. Um, so you hear me have to get knocked back by normal attacks. And when I, whenever I get hit by that, yeah, so I get hit by the one and I got hit backwards. So I take the full normal reaction against enemies like those really annoying cats, for example. Uh, you'll still be knocked in the air if you get hit with the shield ring. So yeah, it doesn't really help. And of course, in mind with the, like, the absorb thing, normally if you absorb an element, you'll just like stand in there with no issue. If you try and absorb it with the shield ring, you'll still be sent flying by all of the different attacks. So yeah, it's nice if you're fighting enemies that can one-shot you, but not really good otherwise. Next up on the list are two related items, so Sun Pendant and Field Pendant. Um, so the Sun Pendant increases damage dealt by an ally and increases the damage taken. Sorry, um, so they both do that, but the Sun Pendant does it for villagers, and the Field Pendant does it for monsters. So it's nice if you're trying to rely on your monsters for doing stuff, or your villagers for doing stuff, and for fighting. Um, it seems to increase their damage by quite a lot, by like almost two times, and half their damage as well, so it's very, very nice. Um, but it does take a slot, of course. Um, I've heard things about how it helps, um, it makes them more aggressive, and it makes your allies more likely to attack enemies. Um, I haven't been able to like see that myself, um, but yeah. So it could also do that as well. Um, so if you are relying on villagers and stuff, this could be useful. Next up is Heart Pendant, and I think this is the last one on this tier. So the Heart Pendant um, increases skill experience gain, which is quite nice. So it's a bit similar to the Star Pendant, where I said that the Star Pendant increases your skill, your levels. Uh, this one increases your skills. And like I said, skills are much more relevant for your stats. So this is automatically better than the Star Pendant. Uh, however, it does have similar issues end game and late game with a star pendant where there are other ways to increase your skill level that aren't just using the heart pendant but again there's no real loss for doing it and unlike the star pendant where you'll only it's only relevant if you're in combat if you're fighting enemies the heart pendant is useful always so even if you're just farming in your farm the heart pendant will increase those skills so while this so it has i guess um lower competition than the star pendant because you aren't going to need to use this in combat for it to be useful. But yeah, so I quite like the hard pendant, even if it's not optimal, it's still nice to have. Okay, so yeah, that was our entire B tier of things that are situationally useful for different things. And here we're gonna start getting to the stuff that are useful in like a lot of different situations, a lot of combat situations and stuff like that. So here are the ones that are usually great. Uh, first up, we have the dolphin brooch. Um, okay, so I don't have this, um, you can only make this uh, after you get married in game, you need to use the white stone, which you could only get after you get married. Uh, in this game, I'm not married yet. Um, I have it in my 3DS version, which I don't have with me. Uh, but basically what it does is it doubles the damage dealt um, and halves the damage taken if it's held by a family member. So that's your wife, husband, or child. Uh, oddly enough, if you do manage to get this item before you get married, it benefits you somehow. Uh, but yeah, so 
it's very good. Uh, it also doesn't take your own slot. Like, you give it to your ally, so it makes it automatically better than the Sun and Field Pennant. Or you can use it for yourself to increase your stats. But yeah, so it's useful uh, for that. Uh, the second one has a similar story. Um, so it also uses a white stone, so I don't have it. But what the magic charm does is... Actually, I'm just going to go to the crafting menu to show you that. Make accessories. Cool, magic charm. Yep. So it says it favors either ma attack or magic attack, whichever is stronger. So instead of... Normally, if you use your sword, you'll use your attack. If you use magic, you'll use your magic attack. This one just means you're going to use whichever one is higher. Um, so you might think this isn't going to be useful if you just want to focus on one. Uh, it's obviously useful if you want to use both physical attack and magic attack. Some staves actually use physical attacks for their spells. Uh, but you might think that if you're using like a long sword, you don't care about this. Um, that actually the opposite is true. Um, that is actually the best case scenario because um, it turns out that in this game magic attack can be increased much more than attack uh, thanks to food so the best food in the game increases your magic attack by a whole lot and doesn't do anything for your attack uh, because of that if you just want to like fully optimize yourself and do as much damage as possible you're actually going to do more damage by increasing your intelligence and your magic attack versus increasing your physical attack, even if you are using a physical weapon. Which is like really weird to me, but like, yeah. Because of that, because it's easier to increase your magic attack, magic charm actually improves your damage if you're on a fully physical build significantly. Like, doubles it. Um, so yeah, magic charm, good. Um, more detail on that, I'll probably save it for another video. I'll probably have a whole video on food, um, as suggested by one of the commenters. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, cool. So that's Magic Charm. Next up is the Champ Belt. So back to stuff I have. So the Champ Belt is really, really weird. Uh, what it does is it increases your max HP by 50%. So first, let me just heal myself. So right now you can see I'm on full health. I'm on 31,000 out of 31,000. If I equip the champ belt, my max HP skyrockets to about 47,000, 48,000. But it doesn't change my current HP. Um, so this is quite nice if you just want more bulk. You increase your overall health by 50%, which is nice. Uh, what's super weird and interesting though, is that if I heal myself on my max HP, uh, so right now I'm on 47,000 out of 47,000. If I unequip it, my... Current HP doesn't change. My current HP is still 47,000. Uh, you can see that here. So I'm on 47,000 out of 31,000. Even if I get hit um, a few times. Hit me. You hit me a few times. Yep. So I'm still above that. I did lose health, but I lost health that was above the limit. So that's a weird trick. You can like change your champ belt, heal, and then swap to a different accessory if you want to do that. Um, I used to do that uh, for some like previous stuff, but yeah, so it's quite nice to just keep you bulky and you can just have it in your inventory if you want. Okay, next up is the Rosary, um, and this is a very, very powerful item. So what the Rosary does is, if you equip it, enemies just stop appearing, uh, which is very nice. I can just like walk from to wherever, from wherever I want, avoiding encounters. Uh, it's very nice just for traveling um, and stuff like that. Uh, bosses do still appear, um, but like, so here I can just go uh, pick up some fodder without any giant chickens bothering me, which is nice. Um, but yeah, so bosses still appear, um, so even if you have the rosary, um, you can use it in the post-game dungeon to just skip straight to the bosses to avoid the rooms with the random encounters if you want to do that. Uh, once you start the dungeon, you can unequip the rosary as well. So it's another nice one that's nice to have in your pocket instead of being in your final sort of equipment. But yeah, that makes the rosary very, very useful just for doing random stuff. Okay, this talisman is amazing. Um, I didn't realize how amazing it was until I prepared for this video. Uh, it's probably one of the strongest items in the game. 
So what it does is it reverses the effects of poison, paralyzed, fatigue, and sick, which are four different statuses. Um, it doesn't seem to have an effect on the other four, which are seal, sleep, faint, or drain. So you need to find some way to deal with those. Um, so you can inflict those statuses on yourself um, just by uh, eating some object X. I'm going to unequip my stuff, just to make sure my resistance goes down. Uh, I equip my object X and I'm going to eat it. So I'm poisoned, I'm sealed, I'm paralyzed, I'm asleep, I'm fatigued, and I'm sick. Okay, so that's I think everything that I can be. It's all six. So here I am all sad like. Um, if I equip a talisman, I'm suddenly all happy like. Uh, here it is. Okay. So let's go through what they all do. So normally poison makes you lose about 3% of your HP every two seconds. Uh, this means that within a minute, if you don't do anything, you'll just die. Talisman makes you heal 1.5% of your HP every two seconds instead, uh, which is very, very nice. Um, that is basically the exact same effect as the Hero's Proof, which is an item we spoke about earlier on in the video. Um, so you basically get the effects of a whole other item while still making you immune to poison. Uh, it has another effect though, uh, which is the effect of um, cancelling paralysis. So normally if you're paralyzed, you can't run, you can only walk. Um, what Talisman does is it instead, if you're paralyzed, increases your movement speed and you can still run. So this has the exact same abilities as Ghost Shoes, um, which is a video, which is a topic I covered in the previous um, video, which just increases your movement speed by quite a lot. Uh, also the effects of Ad's Necklace. And movement speed is very, very important. Um, so normally with fatigue though, you would double the RP cost of things that cost um, RP, either the ones that are normally cost. So the Reaper Slash instead of costing five will cost 10. Uh, things like Master Cure will also have their cost increased. Uh, with Talisman, um, that instead halves just the normal RP costs while nullifying the previous effect. So instead of my Reaper Slash costing five, it'll cost two or three. It'll just, the stuff like the Master Cure will cost the same amount. It won't have any effect. But, so basically that just means it's the effect of your hand at Scarf um, without affecting the crafting costs. And finally, um, Sick makes you lose 0.7% of your RP every two seconds. Talisman makes you gain about 0.2% of your RP every two seconds. So it's about a quarter of the effect of a proof of Wisdom. Um, but just keep that in mind that with this one accessory slot, we get the effects of one full item, another full item, most of another item, and about a quarter of another item while being immune to four status effects. Uh, that's huge, that's really, really good. Uh, you just do need to find your way to deal with the other statuses, but yeah, Talisman is actually probably the strongest and most useful item if you're bothered to actually use it properly. Uh, sort of sad thing is that if you do want to run around like paralyzed and poisoned, everyone will see it. Uh, if you just talk to the brand villagers, they'll be like, are you all right? And if you talk to either Nancy or Jones, they will heal you for free. So it's not something you want to do for like an everyday sort of thing. It's nice if you're like doing a lot of fighting, but not for general use. Okay, so the next item we want to talk about is the happy ring. Um, first, let me just get rid of all these statuses. the wrong one. Okay. Oh, I have no RP. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the next one is the Happy Ring. Um, so the Happy Ring increases item drop rates, uh, which is very nice. So it's this nice pink one, uh, which is over here. So for you, if you have it, it increases drop rates by about 7.5%. For your allies, if you give it to them, it increases your drop rates by about 4%, which is nice. Um, so you can give it to your allies as well if they're coming with you. If you're doing grinding a lot, that could help your drop rates increase by a lot as well. You can also give them like four of the clovers and stuff to make it even higher. But yeah, so obviously if you're going to grind stuff like that, use the happy ring. It's very useful. But yes, so that is the entire A tier of stuff that is really, really good. And now we're just going to talk about the stuff that is just absolutely amazing and definitely worth considering uh, if you're going to find a use for it. So first up is the Art of Attack. 
And what the Art of Attack does is it just multiplies your range by four times. Um, so, what does this mean? Well, if you remember from our swords, yeah, from our weapons video, each thing, uh, each weapon has its own range stat. So you can see that here. Um, so most things have it around one, long swords and spears are higher. And what the dot just does, it increases that range by four. Um, so just to show you what that practically means, uh, if I go to my room here, let me pick up this uh, mixer. If I just put it like the complete other end of this room, and I stand here with my long sword, and I use Reaper Slash, you can see that the attack goes through. I'm hitting enemies all the way from the other side of the room uh, with a power of heart attack. So four times is huge. Um, this is a huge increase in your range. Uh, keep in mind that what we figured out in the previous video is that Glitter Orc Guide increases the range by 0.5 to a maximum of 4.0. Uh, so this means that if you have a short sword, you can use six Glitter Orc Guides um, and it'll increase your range by four. Alternatively, you can just use Art of Attack and it shoots up to four. If you use Art of Attack and one Glitter Orc Guide, you'll have 1.5 times four and go all the way up to six, uh, which is really, really big. And that's basically what I have here. So I have a long sword with the multiplier of 4 to hit, uh, I should know this, 64, uh, 6.4, uh, which is huge. Uh, just to quickly show you that, if I go down here, I'm just hitting everyone with my long sword all the way from the other side. Of course, what you can do is you can go all the way up to 4 uh, and use the art of attack as well. So this long sword that I have now has a maximum range. If I hit the enemy with the slash, Enemies from the complete other side of the room just die. Okay, I just let it die. And now it killed me, because I have no accessories. Um, let me try that again, this time with actual equipment. Oops. Um, go. Where's my hat? Where's my hat? Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, now I have, now I have accessories, so I should be able to kill them. So they were hit all the way from the other side of the room, as you can see, uh, which is incredibly good. You're just one attack, you can just hit everyone. So yeah, um, that makes our attack very, very useful um, just for hitting enemies far away. Uh, I feel like hitting four times and then our attack is a bit overkill. As you saw, just with four range, I could hit the other side of like the room. Um, so I wouldn't recommend going much higher than 4. Uh, if you do use good all guide, I wouldn't recommend using um, Heart Attack and vice versa. I usually just use one or the other is what I would recommend. But we'll go more on that in the next video. Okay, next one we want to talk about is the Strange Pendant. Uh, the Strange Pendant is probably um, my personal favorite item and the one I think is the most underrated. So what the Strange Pendant does is it decreases my defense and the enemy's defense to zero. So if I go here and I get hit, I'm gonna lose about 2,000 HP for a single hit. If I attack them, I deal about 2,000 HP to them. I have a heal up and I instead use my Strange Pendant when I attack them. I deal like 8,000 damage and I'm gonna take 8,000 damage back. You can see that my defense is about 7,000. Um, so 2,000 plus 7,000 is about that 8,000, 9,000. So Strange Pendant just makes my defense zero and it makes their defense zero. This is really, really good uh, if you just want to do as much damage as possible and you're confident in dodging attacks. Um, so Strange Pendant is in like all of my combat builds because I'm confident in my ability to dodge attacks. And it's really, really good if you're fighting like high level bosses. Um, for damage, it is probably one of the best items in the game just for dealing damage. You just need to accept the fact that you will also take damage more back. Um, if you are using a physical weapon, instead you can use critical. So it's just one of the other strange pendant and critical. Um, strange pendant is more reliable because enemies can have critical resistance. Um, but yeah, so I would just I just love using strange pendant just for dealing damage. Uh, it's really really good and it saves slots on critical. But yeah, so strange pendant very very good for dealing damage. One other really useful one is the Art of Magic. Um, so what the Art of Magic does is it halves on, on elemental damage. 
So before we said these enemies were dealing about 2,000 damage to me. Now with this item, I'm only taking 1,000 damage. It halves the damage I take. Uh, this is really, really good. Um, because keep in mind that from my previous videos, we discussed how you can easily build up really high resistances. So this hat gives me 43% of resistances to different statuses. That goes above 100%, which means I'm just going to absorb every single element in the game, almost every single element in the game, and I will only really take damage from normal physical attacks. Art of Magic halves that damage, so basically it just means it halves all damage I would take. Um, with cores as well, so with the no res stat, which my equipment also has, um, it also halves my damage taken, so that goes that cuts all my damage taken to 75%, uh, and this happens whether or not I have any defense at all. So even with Strange Pendant, with Art of Magic, I'm still very, very bulky, um, and it's very, very just nice for both dealing damage and for taking damage back. So your Art of Magic is very, very good and probably the best defensive item in the game. Which is really weird for, for an item called Art of Magic. Okay, so the next one is the Magic Ring. Don't get it confused with the last one and don't get it confused with an item called Magic Earring, which does nothing. Uh, so what the Magic Ring does is it halves charge attack time. Um, so this is useful for a few things. So right now I don't have it equipped. Um, let's say I want to go fishing. Let's say I want to go to the fishing pond. Um, so you can quickly just see how long it takes to charge a fishing uh, fish charge. It's not too bad. Uh, but if I use the magic ring, uh, which is over here, it charges up incredibly fast. And so just for normal farming, just for normal everyday stuff, this item is incredibly useful. Um, if you're just trying to like water your stuff in the morning, Magic Ring is very, very nice. And it's also really good for combat as well. Um, so as we established um, in the weapons video, a lot of staves are just all about using charge attacks very, very quickly. So that's like the normal charge attack. Um, if I use the Magic Ring, I can half that. Use the attack incredibly quickly if I had RP. Use the attack incredibly quickly. Also, you can see how much RP I lost just from having that fatigue stab. Um, but yeah, so Magic Ring is incredibly useful for farming or if you're using stops to farm. Next up and final on the list is the Anna's Necklace. Um, so this one just increases your move speed as well. I like it a lot. Um, I think I just like moving very quickly. So I don't have any shoes now. This is my normal running speed. With Anna's necklace. Um, zoom zoom. It also makes these like dust clouds appear falling behind me. Uh, but yeah, so it has seemingly the same effect as ghost shoes and talisman, but it stacks with both of them. So I have this list over here. Um, basically, Anna's necklace, ghost shoes, and talisman. Yeah, Talisman, all increase speed by the same amount, or at least similar amounts. Rocket Wing increases it by even more. So in the last video I did a quick, I talked about a quick test I did. I just went from my bed all the way to my road. Uh, with no shoes, I get there in about 60 seconds. Uh, with one of them, so with Ghost Shoes, it takes 53 seconds. With Rocket Wing, it takes 43. And I tested for each additional upgrade. So with and it's necklace, ghost shoes, talisman, and rocket wing. I get there in 34 seconds. Taking into account like the load times between each zone, that more than doubles my speed, I believe. Uh, so let me just we should do that. So here I am with nothing. Um, let me just paralyze myself again. I paralyze because and I'm asleep. So I'm going to equip my rocket wing. My shoes that have rocket wing and ghost ring. Yeah, rocket wing and ghost shoes inside them. And I'm gonna make a talisman. Do I need a talisman that also has a and its necklace? Um, which I'm gonna equip. This one is it. This one is it. And yeah, zoom, zoom. 
Like it's so ridiculously fast. Um, it's crazy. It's so fast that I, part of the issue I did when I did my race is I didn't know like where to go. I couldn't react so fast that I would just keep running into walls. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is just me race. I, I, I equipped Rosary uh, when I did this just so I didn't run into enemies. But yeah, so it just get all the way to the end in like 34 seconds. Which is so good. It's very well. But yeah, um, I very much like the speed bonus. I'm just gonna go back home so I don't die. Um, I really, really like the speed bonus. Um, the sort of problem is you can't really justify using two speed items in the same equipment. But yes, okay, so those are all 28 accessories that give you bonus abilities. So in the S rank, we have Anna's Necklace, Magic Ring, Art of Magic, Strange Pennant, and Art of Attack, um, which are all just very, very good at what they do. I guess I'll do this. A tier, we have Happy Ring, Talisman, Rosary, Chance Built, Magic Charm, and Dolphin Brooch. B tier, we have Heart, Field, and Song Pendants. Shield Ring, Jew Pendant, Fluffy Scarf, Handed Scarf, Hero's Proof, Proof of Wisdom, Poison Ring, Silent, or Seal Ring, one of those, Silent Ring. Um, Paralyze Ring, Star Pendant, Throwing Ring, Earth Pendant, Stay Up Ring, and Art of Defense. Yes. Uh, I can name them all. Uh, but yeah, so that's Basically, I would write them in that order. Now, this brings us up to our final question. Which, oh, before that, before I go all the way there, uh, let's briefly talk about the stats that you might want to care about. So like with the shoes, some accessories give stats, which might be useful depending on what you're trying to do. Unlike shoes, there are so many good accessories that you usually don't have spare space for them. Uh, but just for completion, you can have Courage Badge and Diamond Brooch, which gives status resistances, which are very nice. Uh, Lucky Strike gives you 100% critical. Platinum Ring resists all elements by about 15%. And Engagement Ring gives you Love Resistance. Um, love Resistance is important because it's the one resistance you don't get from Mealy Apple. So it's the one resistance that is very, very hard to build. Luckily, like only one enemy in the game <laughs> does love damage to you. So resisting it isn't a big deal if you just avoid that one singular attack from like all enemies. It's not even a boss, it's just one enemy. So it's very easy to avoid. But if you do want to get love resistance, you can use the engagement ring. Uh, but yes, um, element resistance is also useful for mid-game bosses. So a lot of the mid-game bosses just use one element. Uh, so what you can do is you can just make a single accessory just for that. Like if, you're, if you know your enemy is going to use a lot of water attacks, just get an aquamarine brooch. It's so useful. Uh, it pays off really, really, really well. So yeah, uh, back to general stats. But yeah, yes. So with that in mind, um, I now have roughly split them into different categories just to have a rough idea of what you can roughly do. You can just pick a few from each list. So like if you just want to do damage um, with weapons for combat, you could use stuff like Strange Pennant, uh, which is the one that makes your defense zero, or the attack to increase your range. Magic Charm to increase your attack stat to be like a magic attack stat, or Lucky Strike, which is the one with stats that increases your critical. For Stars, Strange Pendant again, of course, and Magic Ring lets you charge up your attacks faster. Um, for defensive stuff, Art of Magic is just needed. Art of Magic is the best defensive item, doubles your defenses. You can also use Champ's Belt or Shield's Ring, so Champ's Belt increases your HP and Shield's Ring makes you occasionally take one damage. And of course, if you just want to move fast, you have Anna's Necklace and Talisman, which is nice to like evade enemies' attacks. I probably wouldn't use both of them just because, you know, um, Art of Magic is so good and space needed. So you, this is one slot taken. You, you don't really have enough space to use both of those, as well as like Strange Pendant and something else specific to the weapon. Maybe you can just do Art of Magic, Strange, and both Anna's and Talisman, but that might not be the best for you. Uh, for general everyday stuff, and its necklace is the best one. It just lets you, you know, walk around the village longer, yeah, faster, far faster, stuff like that. Same deal for Magic Ring. Rosary just lets you do your dailies properly. Um, like there are just some places you will walk through where there are enemies. It might get annoying if you get hit. Rosary just means you won't get hit. 
Uh, the problem is that you just also want to hit random chests as well, and maybe you want random chests, but yeah. And finally, throwing ring is a nice fun option if you just want to chuck wood faster. As we said, crafting uh, for crafting, hand it scarf and fluffy scarf decrease your RP use, so you can use those. And just for general grinding, happy ring increases your drops, hard pendant increases your skill XP, and star pendant increases your level. So they're all good for their own uses, depending on what you're trying to grind, if you are trying to grind. Um, and finally, here is some miscellaneous stuff. Um, so for ally equipment, we spoke, we spoke about how hero's proof is nice to keep them alive. Champs both gives them more defense, which is also good. And courage badge can give them some stats. You can also buff your allies with sun pendant and field pendant. These are the ones that increases your allies' damage dealt and taken. Uh, Here's a fun build, which I call the I Don't Sleep, I Wait build, which involves Diamond Bruge, which increases your fatigue and sick resistance. Then you can just use Stay Up Ring to stay up all night, and use Proof of Wisdom and Hero's Proof to increase your HP and RP gain, so you just never need to sleep. Uh, other fun ones as well, I guess, are the Throw Ring being nice for a contest where you need to throw things. Um, and its necklace is useful for a whole lot of contests as well. Um, and Art of Attack is actually really useful for the flopping festival. Um, so it's the one where you need to hit the Wooly a whole lot of times. Uh, having higher range means you can hit more Woolies with one attack. So yeah, it, these accessories are actually really, really good for contests. Um, especially at its. Um, there's like the bean throwing contest. And it just you can just outrun the beans. <laughs> if you use uh, all of your move speed items, you can run faster than people throw beans. So even if you don't hit the bean, you can just chase it, uh, and stuff like that. For like the food festival, you can just beat everyone to the food. But yeah, bottom line, and its necklace is really, really good, and movement speed is very, very important. Uh, with that in mind, if you just want to copy, here are some of what I use. I would recommend totally copying, I would recommend building your own way. Uh, but so, I use three different accessories. Uh, for normal enemies, I use hard pendant, just to get more skills and it's not really needed that last slot. Happy Ring to get items from them. Um, and it's Necklace and Strange Pendant, so to move fast and to do damage. Uh, if I'm trying to find bosses, I use Champs Built and Art of Magic for defense, as well as Anna's Necklace and Strange Pendant for damage and moving fast. And for normal everyday stuff, I use Anna's Necklace to move fast, Magic Ring to charge faster, Rosary so I don't have any issues, um, running into enemies and hard pendant because why not it's about our throwing ring and it also lets me like move stuff around so if i just want the extra hp um i can just swap to the champs built heal and then move away um i can just start off uh, a dungeon with a rosary to make sure i don't fight anyone or i can use the happy ring i can like defeat an enemy swap to the happy ring to increase the drop chances pick up the drop and then swap back to my other weapon, other accessory. So yeah, um, these are three accessories I use. I would recommend you using a whole bunch as well. Um, but yeah, okay. So here is the final summary of this video. Basically, there are 28 accessories with distinct unique effects out of 70 total. A lot of accessories. Uh, you can use up to four in any piece of equipment, uh, and almost all these accessories have unique and distinct applications. So you have to make a lot of decisions. Uh, because of that, it may be worth having multiple accessories for different situations, which is what I use. So yeah, um, I think that is basically this video. Uh, this is definitely a long one, it looks like. Re recording for almost an hour, my throat is dying. Uh, but yeah, uh, just some closing thoughts. Uh, I managed to hit 200 subscribers, I think, just before I prepared this video, which I am incredibly grateful for. Uh, thank you all so much for watching and subscribing. Uh, it's also almost Christmas, so Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas, or Happy Holidays for whatever you celebrate yourselves. Uh, hopefully you all have time with your loved ones and everything else. Um, and yes, so next video should be on um, final builds, uh, and then I will go through some of the uh, magic stuff stuff, and then I will, I believe, do a cooking video. Cooking in-game, not cooking out of game, although I could do that. Um, 
but yes, um, I also have a few other random fun quick videos, uh, which I hope you'll enjoy. And yes, um, also I've started noticing people like, like the same names appearing a lot in the comments, which I am like incredibly grateful for. So yeah, I read like every single one of those comments and they mean so much to me. I feel like everyone says that, but it's like true. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much uh, for everyone who's watching these videos and I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. If I don't see you before the end of the year. <laughs>